Welcome, today we're out on an Axopar 37 Suntop, which we're fortunate to be able to use. This boat actually is going uh, to Greece within a couple of days, so thank you to the customer for being able to use this Axopar 37 Suntop. And as usual with the review, we'd like to start at the bow. Uh, we did not bring the sun awning this time, but that is an option that has been installed on this boat, which can be seen with these here where uh, the two poles are attached and there is a sun awning which is also uh, slightly open so that it doesn't really catch the wind. A really practical, good way of being protected from the sun in the bow area. And here, of course, we have the bow area with the anchor locker, which I'll quickly open. This boat has the optional anchor winch with a stainless steel stain, uh, chain, a beautiful stainless steel anchor. I really like this particular anchor. It's been, in, it's been done in a really nice way. And the difference with the previous generation of the 37 is that now the controls for the windlass are uh, uh, placed here so that they're protected from the elements. And there are, are some other small details such as these here where you can hang the lines so that you have a really nice and tidy anchor locker where as you can see you can also store the fenders. This is where you fill the water and of course there's this so, so that the water doesn't pour into the anchor locker but is drained in a proper way. A nice stainless steel gas strut and nice finishing also on the inside of the anchor locker. This boat has the optional bow cushion which is made in a way that if you're you sit here and you have the standard uh, setup with only this piece piece here you can as an option have a table in between so that you have a nice settee here to seat I think around four people but as you can see this customer chose to have this optional console I would call it as a um, well, to convert this to a full sunbed, uh, as most people know in the meantime, I'm not meter 92, but you can see that even for taller people like me, this is a great place to be out and enjoy the sun. This particular boat also has the Brabus Trimline package, which means that all the stainless steel, which by the way is always of a 316 quality, the highest quality available in the water sports industry, but this is powder coated in black if you choose the Brabus line trim option. So this is powder coated in black and of course, of course these for the sun awning and also the cleats with the nice Brabus logo engraved. Uh, and there are some other small details which I'll come to later. This is uh, where the shore power uh, is connected, the shore power cable I should say. We as Campers Watersport installed the full installation here because Axopar offers a battery charger as an option. But this particular customer also wanted to have a 230 volt system while being on anchor for example. So we installed a Victron Combi so that he also has 230 volts available while anchoring. So we also increased the battery capacity, capacity so that there's plenty of battery capacity to use it for things like an espresso coffee machine or other items. And of course a really nice feature with the new generation of the Oxapar 37 are these fantastic going doors. A really nice option, which is an option, but I would recommend everyone buying an Oxapar 37 to really choose this. It is a really nice option because, well, it works uh, practically in many ways. It is a, another access to the toilet from the deck, so you can quickly access not only the front cabin, but also the toilet compartment. And also there's more ventilation. You're, uh, you have a, an open slash indoor area, which just gives you more room to enjoy, well, boating. Um, so I, I really, really like this. Some people are slightly afraid that with these 
relatively big windows, it may get hot inside and that is why Axapar also offers a cover to be put, as you can see here with the cleats, over the windows so that it does not get to be really hot inside. They are already tinted, all the windows, but still, if you, you're out boating in a really hot climate, it may be good to put on the cover. Going backwards, this boat also has the optional Aztec decking. Some people like the standard non-skid fiberglass deck, which is practical, but this gives it a bit more of a luxurious feel. And coming to the cockpit here, sorry about the planes, we're quite close to Schiphol. And uh, well, there are some more planes uh, again after, well, we're not finished with Corona, but still there are some more planes, so sorry about that. Let me put that away. I'm just turning the seat here to show you the setup of this great area here in the cockpit. Of course, we can also turn these, but I just wanted to show you that this is a huge area which seats seven persons uh, easily and comfortably because there are seven seats, four on that end and three on this end. So if you turn these uh, three seats, you have a really nice setup. And especially with the optional uh, opening roof, this boat has the electric roof. This is just a great area to be either outside, enjoy the sun, or to close and let me quickly show you to close the roof and be protected from the elements. I'll leave it like this. So again, a great cockpit. This can be folded also like this so that you have more room to walk through the cockpit. There's small cutouts for glasses. There's storage pockets uh, behind the seats, all three of them. This boat has the optional audio upgrades, so there's also a subwoofer which you can see here. And there are plenty of storage areas, like this huge storage box here, also drained. And of course with the gas truck, nice finishing inside, and I always like details such as this, um, which prevents this storage lid from rattling while driving. So many practical details which are an improvement with regards to the previous generation. This customer also chose to have the drawers, the cooling drawers. There's one on each side. You can have either none, one or two. And this customer chose to have both of them. So on each side there's a cooling drawer. A really nice solution, especially while you're here out with friends and you'd like to have some cold drinks close by. And of course, there's the aft cabin. Well, not of course. There is an option to have an aft cabin here, which, as I've shown in previous videos, opens from here. I'll leave it closed now because we have shown that in other videos, a really roomy aft cabin. Again, it is an option. But most people, as, uh, at least in the Netherlands, choose to have the aft cabin, not only to have the possibility to sleep overnight with uh, four people, two in front and two in the back, but also to use this as additional storage. When you have a stand-up pedal board or uh, a wakeboard, a uh, life vest, whatever, there's plenty of space below to store all the items and with your boat still looking tidy and clean. Also, this nice sun lounge here is a, well, uh, something that combines with the aft cabin, a great place to be out on the sun or in the shade, because here in the back, as you may see here, this is where you can also have support for an optional extra sun lounge in the back, so that you can be out in the well, nice uh, elements, but still be protected from the sun. Um, but as an option, you can also have an open cockpit here with an outside galley or a multi-storage uh, area, which is uh, slightly lower than this. 
can be seen in a video we made during uh, the Dusseldorf Boat Show in January this year. Uh, but a really nice storage area with a, an opening lid where you can put water scooters or again stand-up pedal boards or whatever. That may be for some uh, customers also a really good solution. Um, another thing that I'd like to point out, which is a minor detail, but this step here, which is new for 2020, a really practical thing. And also the railings have changed so that they're open here. You can see the step here, but also a small piece of S-Tech here so that you can step on and off the boat easily and also access this middle cleat easily without having to fiddle around uh, underneath the railing because it's open here. One thing I am forgetting with regards to the Brabus line is that if you choose to have the Brabus line trim option, again, everything's powder coated in black, all the stainless steel, but the fender list is also black instead of gray when you choose a, a standard boat without the uh, Brabus line trim option. Okay, going further back, there's a place here where you have a fire extinguisher. There's plenty of light, by the way, in the aft cabin because there's windows on each side. So there's uh, plenty of daylight. And also underneath here, there's a big opening uh, skylight or hatch so that you can have plenty of daylight there. And I think underneath here, there's a second one, I'm right? should not forget to attach it again because of course we'll be driving later and I don't want to lose this so this is quite important to check the cushions before you drive as this is a really fast boat so you don't want to lose these and not even see it um, there's plenty of storage again here we put two fenders in my shoes are here I really like these storage boxes because practically you can store two fenders on each side. The boat comes, if you choose the optional premium package, the boat comes with six fenders and four lines. So you put two fenders here, you put two fenders there and two in the bow area. Of course that can be changed also because as an option you can have this as an extra cooling area also. And I personally think that you won't be putting fenders inside there but there's plenty of space, space for these fenders in, in the bow anchor locker. And again, also here, a gas strut, nice finishing. Um, this also is stainless steel. So it's all done in a really nice way. A place to put the, the flagpole. And this is where you attach a lifeline. There are, I think, at least six on uh, the boat. So safety is of course an important issue. I really like the setup of the um, bathing platforms, platforms in the new generation as there's only one uh, height uh, level uh, difference. So this is all on one level and this is now more or less integrated in the hull with this nice bumper list here on the side a really nice feature on the 37 this has the optional ski pylon which well nearly everybody orders of course this is nice if you have kids and you want to tow some nice tow ball behind the boat or a wad skier or wakeboard or whatever but it also is a nice um, extra grab on if you step on a boat from the side here in Holland we tend to have more and more floating docks which are relatively low and you don't want to step over the hull but you step on the boat from the side here and this is a nice thing to grab onto to hold on to so extra security um, a practical thing by the way I may show it on this side we have for some customers made a small piece here but I think Axapar is now offering that I'm not really sure but by heart I think there's an option to have some enclosure here for small kids or dogs so that they don't fall off that easily. This customer chose to have the additional bathing letter, which is shown here. I really nice, like this nice letter because this is just an extra way of getting in and out of the water 
easily and safely. So this again is an option, but there is a standard on this side, which is below this bathing platform on the port side. Um, some people may have wondered about these here. These are actually some sort of safety lights, I would call them, because this boat has been equipped with uh, the GPO, the joystick piloting system, and this is an indicator for people being around the boat that the system is active and that the props are turning so that you're, you know that you need to stay away from the boat and especially, of course, the propellers. Um, there's another fire, fire extinguisher on this side. There's six speakers uh, on this boat and again a subwoofer. Um, Axapar also changed the roof in the new generation. Maybe not so easy to see on the video, but with the previous roof you could have a targa mast, uh, which could be used of course to bring stuff with you, but also to grab onto. And here what I like is what they did, they more or less uh, made it slightly more efficient and also lower, which can be important in countries such as uh, the Netherlands. This is a sort of gunnel where you can grab onto all around the roof area. So a really nice practical feature. And of course you can still have a roof rack, um, what they call this particular option, these here. And these of course can be used to bring uh, stand-up pedal boards, a canoe, or maybe even uh, mountain bikes or whatever to uh, well, take the boat out for a nice adventure. I can imagine people actually taking a stand-up pedal board or a mountain bike to one of the Wadden Islands which we have in the north of Holland and to have a really nice adventure holiday. Of course the opening roof. This boat has been fitted with a radar as an option, a searchlight, there's antennas for the VHF, etc. Um, the mast can also be folded or taken away. In Holland we sometimes advise people not to have the radar, but we install an AIS system, which is a different approach for safety, where you send out a signal so that all the boats around you know who you are, what your course is, what your speed is, etc. Et and you also know of the boats around you who have a similar system installed. So you don't really need the radar anymore to know which boats are around you. And that may be important for the Netherlands because then you can take these two masts away more easily for bridges because we have many, many bridges in Holland, in Holland as most people know. So that's the roof. And let me then uh, take you inside the boat. And let me turn this seat. I'll come to the dashboard later, but going in here, I'll step aside for a moment, you immediately notice that this particular boat has been fitted with the optional toilet compartment. As a standard, this is completely open and the toilet is here, but I think the best way to see how that is done is to check our other video on the Axapar 37XE, the cross cabin, because that is a customer owned boat which we made a review of also but that has the standard or open setup but this customer chose to have the optional toilet compartment where you have the toilet on this side here instead of with the standard boat the toilet underneath a seat here there is a small place to wash your hands and this is uh, the place where we have all the fuses the v VHF is here we installed a Victron extra remote on this side. And you can have as an option, you can have a shower. Um, I know that Axapar is also working on, or maybe it's already available in the meantime, a system so you have, you can also have warm water, but that is not on this boat yet. So it's only uh, fresh cold water. So this is the toilet compartment and if I turn around like this and open this to this side we access the bow area of the boat where you have of course this 
double bed and still plenty of room. This is also quite a nice place to do some reading during the evening or so. Or on a really hot day and there they are again, these going doors. I'll open both of them just to give you some idea of what the atmosphere is like. Again, I really like this feature because it's a, an in slash outside area now. The sunlight comes in partially, so there's plenty of light here, there's ventilation, and it's just a really easy and simple way to go to the bow area. So really nice. I also usually tend to show how long the beds are. Again, I'm on meter 92. So this is slightly under two meters, I would say, but long enough for most people. In the standard boat, you can also, well, I shouldn't say in the standard boat, if you do not choose the optional um, uh, toilet compartment, you can have a faucet and a sink here as an option, which is also shown on the review of the 37 cross cabin. And I think with that we've covered all this. So let me close the going doors and uh, head for the, um, for the steering position, start up the engines and take the boat out for a spin. Both engines are running. This boat has been fitted with twin Mercury V8 300 horsepower engines in cold fusion white. And not only that, this boat also has the optional joystick system, a truly great system, which I like. And before taking the boat out, let me quickly show you some nice uh, things. This actually works really intuitively. So people who do not drive boats often and don't really get to have enough exercise to really be an expert, they don't need to worry because now you have this great system which works like this. If I take the joystick to the side, the boat really goes sideways. And if I turn this knob here, the boat turns 360 degrees just by turning this wheel here. There's another really nice feature called Skyhook. If I engage it now, today is not a today is not a really good day to test this feature. But this it shows also on the screen screens. It really uh, positions the boat exactly on the space where you are at that moment. So if you're in front of say uh, a lock or a marina, and if you're alone and you want to take your fenders out, your lines out, or whatever. You could just put, uh, put the skyhook on, walk around, uh, do all the necessary preparations, come back, disengage the skyhook, and take off again. So, I'm confirming that I'm taking over, and off we go. This boat has the optional twin 12 inch display system with this nice glass in front of it. I really think that this is the nicest option, unfortunately, of course, it's the most expensive option, but a really nice setup because you have a really nice and clean dashboard and you have all the data that you need right in front of you. Again, this boat has been fitted with joystick piloting, so I just showed you the feature using the joystick, but also the Skyhook, but there's also an autopilot, so if I press this and I engage it like this, it's an autopilot and with the screen I can take it 10 degrees to starboard or port or whatever. You can also combine it with the chart plotter and uh, set up waypoints and have the boat take you with the autopilot from waypoint to waypoint. A really nice feature. I'll leave it on aut autopilot for a second while I do, the, I do the explaining about these screens. This is basically the main menu where you can access all the different sources uh, of these screens. Here, as on the other screen now, I have the engine data, 
I won't go into detail, but the most important engine data can be shown here. And uh, I can have the instruments, like regular instrument, cluster on a sport boat. Some people like this. You can have different setups. Let me show you quickly that there's, well, different ways of showing. Of course, you can have the radar, you can have the chart, a really nice feature. I think I've shown in the review of the 37 cross cabin that you can have, if you install the Navionics Platinum Plus, you can have this in a 3D setup, setup with a Google Maps overlay. It's still building the screen, but we won't wait for that. And one thing I'd like to show you is this, what we as Campus Watt Sport installed, and again, that is the inverter slash battery charger combination, which is linked to these Simrad displays. So you can actually access all the data with, which has to do with the full electrical system of the boat. So you can switch on the inverter, of course, switch it off, switch only the charger on, which is usually a good thing to do because if you forget about switching off the inverter, it still drains a, a bit of the energy from the batteries. You can see the load, you can see how much uh, capacity still is in the batteries, etc., etc. And another nice feature for 2020 for Axopar, and this is a real industry new thing in this section of boats. This is a Axopar app, I would call it. Uh, they've done it in this in cooperation with uh, Simrad. And you can access this screen where you can see the data of the boat. So how much fuel you have, how full the service battery is, etc., etc. You can have this checklist set up. But what I like most is this, the trip where you can uh, log your trips, but also this here, if I choose the drive option, now it shows the sports mode. This also is very interesting, the economy, where you can see the uh, fuel consumption and it actually tells you if, for example, at some uh, stage when you think you're driving in an economically and fuel efficient way, you may actually need to speed up a bit to have a better relatively better fuel consumption and here you can also uh, use the audio from the screen so a really nice feature with uh, which comes with this twin 12 inch setup let me put it in economy mode and going back to the dock cockpit of course there's all the switches here Navigation light, deck lights, underwater light, if you chose that option, the wipers, the, the window wash, a very practical feature which I don't see on all boats. And of course you can open and close the roof here. Let me close it in the meantime. It may protect us with regards to the audio if we do the driving. The optional bow propeller, which we advise on every Axapar. I think I've actually sold only one a 24 without. And this is the trim tabs, which aren't really necessary, but in some conditions it may, may be interesting to have these. Because for example, every boat, if you, the wind is coming from that direction and you go like this, every uh, planing boat tends to lean against the wind and you can compensate that with the um, trim tabs. This boat, that I forgot to explain, this boat also has the active trim feature, which is shown here. And um, a really nice feature, basically I'm forgetting about telling this because I'm getting more and more used to this and I find it more or less logical that every boat in this caliber has it. It is a system where you don't have to really worry about trimming the engines. You just put it on, you put it in some uh, preferred mode. You have a, a mode number one up to five, one being the most conservative way of trimming and uh, five being the most aggressive way of trimming. Now it's on uh, number two, you leave it on and that's it. Another thing, by the way, 
which is nice of these screens if, is that you can put this instrument bar, bar on and off. I tend to leave it on because no matter what screen is shown here, for example, if you have the chart here, you still have the most important data here. And I tend to want to see what the temperature of the engines is or other things. So a really nice setup. Again, this boat has been equipped with twin Mercury V8 300s. The active trim is on. Now that I am increasing the speed, they are, are already slightly trimming up the engines. I really like the torque of these V8s. Um, they have uh, four point, I think it's 4.3 or 4.6 liters uh, instead of 2.3 with the previous L6 engines. So there's a better torque and you feel that while accelerating or if you have 10 people or more on board, there's just plenty of power and twin V8 300s is just a really good combination. I'm gently increasing the speed, just be careful with the cameraman and already it's 40 kilometers an hour, it's so smooth so quickly it's really very nice to be out planing like this I also like this here because you're protected from the wind going quite fast we're now doing 45 kilometers an hour especially if you take longer journeys it's nice to be protected when I sit down I'm even protected in a better way let me do that for the audio of course, there's plenty of speed because to take her up to full speed, you'll see that she's really, really fast. Eighty kilometers an hour. Eighty-one. doing 70. Turns can be made really easily like this. A really nice added uh, benefit of having the joystick option, let me take down the speed in the meantime, is that there's twin uh, steering pumps on this boat, which means that the steering is really quickly. Let me point that out that if I take the speed out and if I turn the wheel I couldn't do this on another boat with this high speed as on this one it's so fast going from one end to the other which is really nice and practical while maneuvering or in difficult uh, situations and of course it's nice to, to drive a boat such as this in areas of which we have a lot in the Netherlands where you cannot drive fast let me take the speed down slightly, going around 11, 12 kilometers an hour, which is still quite a good speed for canals, etc. And the boat is really nice, quiet, a really comfortable boat to drive also slowly. Also, it's keeping its course really good. I've noticed on other boats that some boats tend to go like this, not on an Oxpar 37 with a twin end installation. It drives like a train basically. So with that I'd like to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you have any questions please leave them below this video in the remarks uh, se section or uh, visit us. We have a great showroom where we usually have many Oxapar boats. We also have some in our watershed available for testing. So please visit us, but, but for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in one of our next videos.